Right, I'm going to try and fix this thing today. The treadmill, a bit of a weird fault suddenly popped up. It was working fine a couple of days ago, no problems. Wife went to go and use it yesterday and it just blew the fuses out. Well, popped the circuit breakers. And um, I'm going to investigate this and find out what's going on. There's definitely something wrong with this. Could be interesting. So it's a Proform Endurance apparently. As it says Endurance M3, that's the model number. Maybe help you if you've got one of these things and it fails. I don't know, but um, this sits in the garage as you saw and it, it's pretty dusty and stuff in here, pretty dirty, so it's gonna be an interesting job, but let's get into it and find out what's going on. So it's just measure the resistance of this because it may be a fault which will show up with resistance measurements. Let's see. 161K, well, that doesn't seem offensive. These, with the power switch turned on, by the way, when the power switch turned off, it is open circuit. I've already checked that part. So basically what happened is when it was turned on, it, the circuit breaker blew, and that was it. And it's basically showing a short. I reset the breaker and it's shorted. It's definitely a dead short on this thing at AC levels. But on this measurement, it looks fine. So that's no good. Let's try something else. So I've got my old installation resistance tester out here. It's, uh, we'll stick it on here. Let's hook this up to the plug. So at 250 volts, so it shouldn't matter, it shouldn't affect anything. It should be safe, not damage anything. It's hooked up, don't touch. Let's do a test. And we're getting basically a short. So that's not very good, is it? It's actually showing worse than what the multimeter was showing, so yeah, that's, um, you know, it's basically saying this short. So there's some kind of insulation breakdown, which has happened there. Multimeter is not showing it up, but when you go to high voltage, it's a dead short. So we have to go digging. So there's the back of the unit. And as you can see, it's got a few screws there. There's not much on it. So there's a few screws on the back there. There's a couple underneath as well, tried to get to. So I think I have to take the back ones out and the actual thing can fold upwards anyway. So I'll do that. Then I'll get the bottom screws out and hopefully then we can access some stuff and see what's going on. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't think it's the cable because when the switch is turned off, we don't have the same fault. Well, that was actually surprisingly easy. It wasn't quite how I thought it was. It's actually better. So we've got three screws on the back, which I mentioned. There's also two screws on the side, one each side. And then the top cover that's lifted off and you can access everything. Brilliant. And uh, it's pretty dirty in there. So I haven't actually inspected anything yet. So I'm not sure what we're going to find, but it means we can access everything. Now, one of the thoughts which was described is from my wife when she tried it, when she powered it on, apparently the belt moves straight away. All right, so when she turned the power switch on, that should only ever move when you tell it to start moving. So it actually could be a sign of a shorted drive or something like that, you know, actual motor control output. It's possible, but it could just be there's so much gunk on this board and shorting something out because it is pretty dirty in there. I mean, it's in a garage, so it's possible there's even bugs crawled across it or something like that and died on it, who knows. So there's a close-up of the control board. As you see, it's pretty dirty, but yeah, I haven't looked at it close myself yet, so that's what I'm going to be doing next. So just looking around just now, I'm just looking at these main AC wires. The actual AC comes in, goes underneath that ball, disappears to something else. I'm going to have to take that board out to have a good look at it. But the um, wires here, you've got this blue wire, which is marked as AC hot. That's rubbing on the edge of this heat sink here, sitting right on the edge. There's like a slight mark there. And on the back of the wire, I can actually feel there's a little divot on the back of the wire. So maybe that's what's causing an insulation breakdown. It's possible, I can actually feel it. It's a little mark just there, I don't know if you can see it on camera. But uh, yeah, that might be related. But you think something's got a lot of vibration and movement going on, because you know, it's a treadmill, it's gonna move around a little bit and vibration for the motor and people bouncing up and down on it. That it wouldn't be good to have wires running across a heat sink like that. That's not the best design. There's also cable tied onto this. And that's metal body. It's plastic, I think, behind it maybe, but that's all cable tied onto that as well. So that may be another point which my problem. This wire here has been rubbing on there as well, it's a little black mark. Get up there, there we go. So just up here there's a little black mark just there, but this wire's been sitting on there rubbing as well. So there's a few things there which I'm not liking. Anyway, I need to get this board out so I can see what's underneath it. So I completely unplugged the main board, as you can see it's sitting there on the conveyor belt. I've got the installation tester here ready to go again. Let's retest. Hooked up as it was before against the other end of the cable. Still got a short. Okay, that eliminates a lot of stuff, which means it's not the main board. There's the board, in case you want to have a closer look at it. 
Maybe it'll be of interest to you, I don't know. Anyone ever working on one of these things, it might be helpful. What do you think is underneath this plate here? I already know because I've already looked. We have a big ass input filter. Now, input filters contain capacitors. That's not a good sign. So we can verify if this line filter is the problem or not, because the AC comes straight into this filter and comes straight back out and goes to the rest of the circuitry. So if I unplug the outputs completely and retest it, that'll tell me whether it's a filter or whether it's something other than that filter. So white's going to that side, white that side, blue that side. The other end is already unplugged from something, because I've unplugged those from the main board. So that's probably not a good sign. Okay, we'll leave that wedged in, so it's not touching anything, hopefully. Okay, let's retest it again. Still shorted. Has to be line input filter. Well, that's going to be interesting. Right, to eliminate everything else, I've only got the filter hooked up. Absolutely nothing else is hooked up. Let's try this again. There we go. Confirms it. Filter is fried. So that's on the input. Let's hook it to the output in case it matters. It shouldn't do. Should be exactly the same, basically. I want to make sure. Also shorted. So, yep, yeah, there we go. There's the problem. And if you're playing along at home, that's the filter. Here's the information about it. Let's see if I can get one. So I was thinking that this drive controller may be a problem because sometimes when you get a failure or something like this, it's been triggered by something else failing first. It's put like a big surge to the system or something like that, okay? So I was thinking, okay, with the description that my wife said about the, the belt moving by itself when she turned it on, and as I mentioned when I was doing the teardown of the conveyor, that might mean a multiple control problem. So I thought I'd better check this board out. Anyway, I thought I'd show you on this side as well. This is what the actual filter looks like inside. It's all potted and nothing really to see, but you can see one of the big inductors in there. And this side's actually different material. It's like a rubbery time material, a bit weird. And this is epoxy. So I don't know why I've done different materials on each side, but anyway, um, nothing to see, nothing to fix, so nothing I can do with that. I've ordered something similar, not exactly the same. I can't get exactly the same one. Anyway, so I thought, okay, I'll pull the board out the, the aluminum profiles here. It's one big extrusion. Well, actually, before I took it out, I actually measured this device with multimeter, this in diode mode, on the top of the ball, and I got a short across all three terminals. I thought that probably is not a good sign. So I thought I'd take the, the device out. So I've taken the device out of the board, and you see it goes over here, it's Q6 of Smart Tes. I tested this with my DCA55, which because I did all this in my other lab, because this one was busy at the time. So let me get my other one out. So DCA75, we'll chuck this on it. Exactly the same result as I got before. All three leads short together. So either the filter blew, which then put a big surge through this device somehow, or this device failed, which then blew the filter out. So there's two problems, not one. My instinct said there could be two problems. Looks like I might be right. So as this had three leads shorted together, I thought I'd better check what I think is the gate terminal, because the centre pin here, that appears to be the DC input from this side, All right? So that's positive side of this capacitor. So it's a DC input. So it's not a triac. And then this side here appears to go in junction with this diode here out to this terminal A plus. So I think that's what goes to the motor. I think it's a DC motor. So yeah, that's going out. So I think that that side there must be the gate. I could also look up the part information. The part number, in case you're interested, is a G4PC40K. I've got no idea what that is. Anyway, so I thought I'd just check the gate size, just stick that on the gate and check these resistors that go to the gate. There's two resistors in parallel, which is marked as 201. So they should be 200 ohm resistors, and I'm getting 99 ohms. So, yeah, that seems fine. They're not damaged which means it's unlikely to have gone back and damaged anything else. If those resistors are blown, I would be looking at going back further and to the, you know, the actual driver that runs that gate and see if that's blown as well. But the fact those resistors are okay means it's probably fine. 
I'd be surprised if there's anything further back than that. And there's a couple of diodes here, I suppose we could check them, couldn't we? It's got like a formal coating on it. There we go. Alright, and this way. Yeah, that looks looking alright as well. I've already checked this big diode right here, that's fine. There's a lot going on this thing. It's also got this, looks like a switch mode supply down this side, maybe. It's got some auto couplers and things like that down there as well. I haven't really reverse engineered any of this or anything like that. I even looked for a circuit diagram. Well, there may be one out there, I don't know. It just seems that this part here has failed, so I'm going to have to get one of these. That's annoying. Some things occurred to me. When I was looking back at the footage I recorded yesterday, in regards to the treadmill and this filter and insulation resistance testing and stuff like that, I noticed something. And that's that when I had unplugged the control board, the resistance had actually increased. Let's turn this on. Yes, I'm not doing this in a particularly safe way, but it's fine. I'm not going to touch the probes. And stick that across there. That's about 100, right? Zeroing's overshooting slightly. So if I get this on angle for you so you can see the actual zero point. There you go, there's a zero there, right? Stick it there. That is over 100. That's in 100k. Now, if I do the same test on this board across the AC inputs, see that? It's going down to zero. I think I've made a mistake and that this filter isn't actually bad. Uh, I think it's okay because if you actually look at the filter properly it's got resistors on the input. All right, so there's some resistors here. So it's got two 330k resistors across it so that's about 160 odd k, right? 162k which matches up to what we're seeing on insulation resistance test. So I actually think this filter might be fine. Maybe this filter isn't blown, but it was just giving me some confusing readings because I wasn't expecting it to be that low resistance to the filter. I think this board is bad. You know, I already know this transistor's gone, which I've taken out, but I'm still getting a low insulation resistance across here at 250 volt. More investigation required. Now I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with the input of this board. There's a MOV here which is across the line neutral input. I actually lifted that MOV out just now um, to eliminate that. That MOV is fine. I checked across these two other MOVs. They're not shorting out either. So that narrows it down a little bit. There's not much else in here. I'm thinking it could be to do with this diode bridge. So then we look around here. The only thing that's really across that line input is that bridge rectifier and that MOV. And I've already eliminated that MOV. That leaves a bridge rectifier. There's other MOVs and there's also a gas discharge thing here as well. They're kind of in series together on this other terminal. The fuse, which is here, is a little rectangular fuse that is not blown. So that means it's not after that point, which is where the short is. That fuse is on the output that bridge rectifier, um, amongst other things. It also comes across over here to this regulator as well. I haven't actually looked at it yet. It's called Q3, so it could be a transistor. So I'm thinking bridge rectifier. This is the thing straight after the bridge rectifier without the fuse in series. It's the only thing I think that is actually without the fuse. So I might check that as well and just make sure this isn't a problem. So this device here is marked as S8025L. I've got no idea what that is yet, I haven't looked it up. But measuring 50 ohms from that side to this side, so pin 1 to pin 3, measuring 50 ohms both directions. The centre pin, I'm not measuring anything. The centre pin is the input. I think that side there, I think pin 3 is going to be the gate. I'm guessing it's a MOSFET of some kind, it's probably a gate. It's like an optocoupler or something just here. MOC3052A, yep, that's an optocoupler. So I think that's a triac optocoupler, so it's probably a triac. Based on the fact this could be a triac or something like that, put my SCR100 on, which I only recently got from Peak for doing some other troubleshooting I had to do. And I did a review on this recently, if you want to see that. So let's try this out, see what that thinks of this. I mean, is it a, is it a triac or not? Let's find out. Oh, it's an SCR. Okay. Circuit control rectifier. So, gate is green. Yep, that's what I thought. Gate is green, that side. Anode and cathode. Right. Okay. That's what I was expecting. Right. Okay. SCR. Of course it is. Right. 
and it seems to be fine. So that doesn't appear to be blown up. That's good. Oh, we're worth getting that. Thanks a lot, Peak. So what I think I'll do now is desolder this diode and check it out of circuit. That will eliminate everything else. Right, let's try this. Let's see what happens. Input side was the centre pins. Oh, that is unexpected. I actually expected that to work. Okay, so it isn't the bridge rectifier. Hmm. So that's strange that the bridge rectifier didn't short. So let's check the circuit board again without the bridge rectifier in it. Huh. The problem's gone. It's no longer shorted. Uh, what? Okay. So, AC input's okay. AC input onto the bridge rectifier is okay. Well, bridge rectifier test's okay. I can't fault that. Can't fault the AC input side without the bridge rectifier installed, which means it has to be something the bridge rectifier is powering, which is the SCR, which I tested in circuit and seemed fine. This gets more and more interesting. So I've taken the SCR out and there you go, I'm measuring 51 ohms across the SCR between the gate and the cathode. Gate and anode, mega ohms. Oh, sorry, anode and cathode is mega ohms. Gate and anode is mega ohms. Just changing polarity around. Yeah, so I'm not sure that's right. Having 50 ohms or so between the gate and the cathode doesn't seem right. So the parts arrived to fix this thing. So I've got some other things here. So I've got these parts arrived from AliExpress, which are obviously recycled parts or maybe fake, I don't know. We'll check that. And this is an original part which came from Mauser, so you can see there's a difference between like the leg length, for example, and that you can see this one's all shiny and not flat, and this is the step metal. So this is definitely original, this has been reworked. So if you look really closely, you can probably see a little lump just here and this there and just there, all about the same height. So I think that it's had leg extension soldered on. That's what they do when they salvage parts and they make them look like new. Anyway, um, so that's that Express one. This is from Mauser. Then the parts aren't exactly the same. This one's supposed to be a 40k, and this one's a 40s. That's all I could get from Mauser was 40s, which isn't what was originally in this device. It's originally had a 40k, which is why I've got the AliExpress one as well. And I've actually done some quick tests on it. I actually just do a retest now and show you what I found. So this is the AliExpress one, which is a 40k. So it comes up as the right device at least. Try and get so you can see it without getting reflections. Yeah. So VG VG on is 6.27 volts at 5 milliamps. One microamp IG and VG off is 5.06 volts at 5 microamps. GFE 20.6 stuff like that. Right. So this is all very similar to the other device, but not the same. Okay, so the S version which I've got here is basically giving a voltage about one volt more. And I checked the data sheets and that's actually correct. So I think these Ks are genuine, but they've been salvaged. And to be honest, I don't really mind using salvaged parts, as long as they still work okay. So, you know, it's alright, at least I've got them. So I'm going to use these ones rather than this one, because this meant the K is what's in it originally. Not an S, but I've got the S in case the K's didn't work. And the other thing that arrived is these SCRs. So these are the S8025L. Because I'm just suspicious that the SCR could be a bit dodgy, so I'm actually just going to replace it and just have done with it. They're not that expensive to get, so I'm just going to swap that out with a new one. So I'm going to put an AliExpress IGBT in there and a um, brand new. SCR for Mauser because I can get exactly the right part for that so I wouldn't worry about substituting so I'll put those in hopefully that will solve it I did also get some brand new bridge rectifiers as well to replace this I mean I have tested it it does seem like it's fine but I've got them just in case 
So I'm going to solder in this device like this. Now, it does actually sit right at the bottom edge because obviously I've got to think about the screw hole and getting that alignment correct. So we'll be careful about that. But unfortunately, I can't like put it in place and then solder it because of access and things like that. I mean, I can probably do maybe one leg and get it aligned up, and I don't think it's going to go too well. Though. So there's some oval holes on the actual heat sink, so it's got to be a bit of play in the height. And as long as I get it straight, I think it will be okay. That. Okay. Now I'll get this all lined up, then I'll resolder the rest of the pins and get it in there properly. You don't see me do that, do you? Because this should all be in line, it sits on the heat sink. Alright. Now this actual device is pushed down slightly and they pull it up slightly. It did get bent in whilst I was handling it. Make sure these are straight. Yep. So then I'll have to align this one with the ruler. Alright. So let's adjust this. And hopefully get it straight as I on. Okay, I'll officially check that. You can see it better from this side, maybe. Yeah, that looks fine, doesn't it? That's okay. This side of the rest of the on. Right, let's cut these off. And I've got to clean all the flux off. Now so we'll do the same thing with the SCR here. I've already formed the legs on it because they have to match this kind of shape. So I've done that. So I'll solder this in. Then I'll just tweak the positioning slightly once I've got it in. Now this pad was actually glued onto those devices originally. It had like a, some adhesive which was basically stuck to the other device. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put some thermal compound on here, just a little bit, which might actually help it anyway. And then I shall just slap it on. Bit messy, it will do the job. So I'm just going to stick it on this side, like this. And then I'll do the same on these ones. This one didn't actually have a thermal pad on it. But I'm going to put some compound, which I didn't have before. A bit of that. I'll put some on the diode as well. Just, you know, why not? Let's help it out. Give it a chance. And I'll stick some on this one as well. Just to give it a chance. Might as well do things to make it a little bit easier for it. Keep cool. Maybe it's white blue in the first place. Who knows? So, let's get this lined up into place. I'm sure there'll be some purists out there complaining about how I put a thermal paste on, but I don't actually care because it didn't have any in the first place. So anything is going to be better. So I've got these nylon screws which will locate into these. So I'll put those in first just to get it started so it's lined up, and then I'll put these other devices in properly. Alright, so at least it's going to be held kind of in place. And then about getting it right after. It's not going to be tightened just so it can move around a little bit. Because I've also got to bolt these to the heat sink and get it all nice and straight that way. So I was going to put the bolt screws in this way which is how they were originally. Because you can't get to the screw heads from the other side in most of these cases. Two of them you can. But I was going to do them all the same way. That's how it was originally. And the reason I put all the bolt through first that makes sure that everything definitely lines up before I start tightening things. Now what I'll do is put the nuts on and tighten them up. Alright, it's time to do the tricky ones. I'll try and get these nuts on with tweezers. I've already got the washer on. There we go. I'll have to come back around afterwards and actually tighten these up properly. But uh, it's all straightforward enough really. So I'll just bolt it on there nice and tight. Let's just do these nylon nuts up. Oh, nylon bolts. Can't do it too tight otherwise it might snap. But it needs to be enough to hold it down. I'm not liking the fact there's actually one here for this spade terminal here because when you pull these things off, you have to pull really hard. I'm actually surprised it didn't snap that bolt when I was taking it apart. Anyway, that is now done. I can put that back in. Let's see if it actually blows up or not. This is a nervous part, so I haven't tested it yet. 
it's all connected up. Power switch is on the unit. Just got to turn the power point on. Right, no bang, and the display is on. It didn't short out and go bang like it did before. Excellent. And there you go, there's a the display. It's actually powered up. The belt's not running. It's working exactly as it should. Excellent. Right, let's try turning it on. There we go. It's running. Let's reduce the speed. Okay, that's working fine. Let's try higher speed. Try and incline. So that's lifting the end up. Just checking all the motors basically, making sure everything's working, it's not dying. They're not shorting out. Well, that's looking like it's okay. It's still going up. There we go. Let's go back down. You do hear this motor speed drop though when it's changing the angle of the incline. That's interesting. Something I'm going to do yet before I put it, button it back up again is um, put some sleeving or something around those wires where they go across that heat sink. So they're not rubbing directly on the heat sink. I'm going to do something about that. I can't leave it like it is. I think it's a really bad setup. It's still going down. There we go. Now it's stopped. That's all the way down. Cool. It's working. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you later. Bye.